God ever used me, prophet? What do I have? Moses asked the same question and said, Lord, I don't have anything. Who am I? If I go, you are, saying, you are telling me to go to Egypt. If I go and the king questioned me, what should I say? Hallelujah. And how would they even believe me? Look at me. I ain't got no power. I ain't got no authority. Continue. Nor hearken unto my voice. Mm -hmm. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. That is the excuse of many of you. What if I tell them this thing you are showing me and nobody believe me, Lord? What if they call me a liar? What if they say I am making it up? I'm seeing it. The sad thing is that many of us see what we say we see. Many of us hear what we say we hear. Amen. And you know, God is so... Sometimes when God does things, he makes sure nobody's around. <laughs> that is the sad part. Now you trying to tell people, man, this is what I heard. They said, no, you didn't hear anything. <laughs> you didn't hear anything. Where is the evidence? I believe that at that point, Moses had wished that everybody was there to see what he was in. But nobody was around. Somebody shot a big amen. amen. So he said, Lord, you, how, how would they believe me? I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. I can put my hand in the fire. It's not burning me. I see a bush that is being consumed with fire. But the bush is not burning away. Something is wrong. I can see the miracle. I know. I know that the calling of God is upon my life. I can sense it. I can feel it. But how am I going to go about it? Somebody shout a big amen. How am I going to go about it? And the Lord answered him something. Go ahead. Listen. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? What is that in thine hand? <laughs> now notice this. Moses, a man, had been a shepherd for 40 years. He didn't care about nothing. He thought he was a failure. After all, in the beginning of his life, there are some of you here, you will tell me, Prophet, those days, man, I should have money, Prophet. Prophet, those days, I was very good, but now, you always have that, the past glory memories. Moses had past glory memories, and he never knew that one day God was going to call him the way God was about to call him. When he was a shepherd, he had one thing that he, he always, you know, used to tend the sheep. This is something that Moses did not even respect. There are many of you, there is something in your life you don't respect. He had what? A shepherd's staff. This thing was a nonsense. Nobody would know who, who respects a stick. It's a stick he used to hit the, the ship so the ship would go this way, that way. Hallelujah. But that is all that he, he had. And he never respected that staff until God asked him, what do you have in your hands? Somebody shout at the beginning. Amen. There are many of you. You have things on you that you don't respect. There is something about your character. Amen. Maybe all the time, whenever you talk to people, people, you know, can, can, can listen to you, you know, there is something about you. Maybe every time you share the word of God, maybe every time you go out there and somebody is crying, even your little touch, just rubbing them on the back, saying something to them, amen, make them happy. There is something about you that draw people, but you don't respect it. Moses had a shepherd staff that he used to direct the sheep. He didn't respect that. He probably hated his job. Some of you hate what you're doing right now. Amen. But you don't know God can use what you don't respect to be a blessing in your life. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. God said, what do you have in your hand today? God is asking you, what do you have on you? I have no $10,000 in my hand. Amen. I don't have, you know, gold. I don't have nothing. All I have is a stick. And God said, that's all we're going to need. <laughs> Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Somebody said, that is all we're going to need. That's all Let me tell you something. God is not looking for you to do something explosive. There are some of you, you are waiting for something explosive. You know, I, I always hear people tell me, oh, prophet, when I get rich, I'm going to bless you. Really? <laughs> Whatever you have now, be a blessing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Somebody shout to me, amen. Yeah. When, when are you going to get rich until you come and give your offering? <laughs> Somebody shout to me, amen. Why do you think that Jesus, when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, he was, you know, the, the Bible says he was in the sanctuary. The place was filled. Amen. Everybody was giving their offering. Amen. But there was one woman that the Bible calls the woman, what? The, the, the widow's, what? 
might. might. She gave all that she had. Just a boy. She gave all that Jesus was well pleased with that woman than everybody else that gave. Is somebody hearing me? Amen. God is a big God. Amen. All he needs is a small thing from you and he will transform that small thing to become big. Amen. God is a God who admires humility. If you will humble yourself, he said he will lift you up. All he needs, God don't need you to prove to him that you are big. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are tiny in the sight of God. All he wants you to do is acknowledge that, you know, God, I can't do it until you, you empower me. The Bible says, not by power, nor by might, but by my, my spirit. What? Say of the Lord. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Read for me. And he said, cast it on the ground. Cast it on the ground. In other words, give it like an offering. Amen. Put it on the ground. Uh-huh. And he cast it on the ground, mm -hmm. and it became a serpent. Moses now put the stick, the stick that he had known so well that he did not respect. He put it down. And then the Bible says immediately that stick turned into a serpent. Can you imagine how shocked this man was? Amen? He had been walking with this staff for 40 years. Amen? And so, and all of a sudden, this staff that he so well known have now turned into a snake. A big snake in front of him. Somebody shot the beginning. Continue. And Moses fled from before it. He fled. Somebody shot the beginning. <laughs> now he respected. Am I speaking right to somebody? Let me tell you something. When God gets into something, he's going to respect it. When God gets into something you take for granted, you will respect it. Moses put the stuff down, and I believe when he put it down, he was like, what is, what is, what is this God trying to do? But sooner. He saw what God was trying to do. This morning or this afternoon, people of God, God is speaking to you that what do you have in your hands? What do you have in you that you don't respect? That is what God will use. The Bible says God will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Something that you think is foolish, stupid, that's what God will use. Because he is God all by himself. Amen. God can make something out of nothing. Yes. Amen. So he cast the stick, and now the stick that he didn't respect, the stick that he used to hit sheep, the stick that he threw away when he, after work, he just lay down, he threw it away on his side, he don't care. Now this stick had transformed into a snake, and the Bible said he scared him and he fled away. Yeah. He said, what is, what is this? Continue. And the Lord said unto Moses, <laughs> put forth thine hand. And take it by the table. <laughs> Somebody shot a big man. Amen. You know, I love God. God has a sense of humor. God, you have turned that thing into snake, now you, you want me to pick it up. <laughs> Somebody shot a big man. This thing has now turned into a snake, you want me to pick it up. And I said, go ahead, pick it up. He's showing you that I have given you power. Amen. Somebody shot a big man. Amen. He said, pick it up. And the Bible said, Moses, pick it up by the tail. And then the snake turned into what? The staff again. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. We serve a God who can transform your life within a minute. Amen. Transformation. All he needs you to do is offer yourself as a living sacrifice unto him. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Never you underestimate yourself. One thing I don't like is how some of you underestimate yourself. Prophet, I don't think God can ever use me. Now, there is something we call humility. Humility is when you say, you know what, I know God is calling me, his hand is upon me, I'm going to obey, but at the same time I'm going to humble myself. Yeah. And then there is something we call disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. Excuses. <laughs> Prophet, I don't think I'm the one God want to use. Because of this, because of that, because of this, because of that. How do you know? Somebody shout the beginning. Amen. You have to pay attention to the calling of God. Amen. His hand is upon your life. There is something, you know, I always say this. Can you imagine, right now, we have a sickness we call cancer. Cancer is so deadly, so demonic. Yes. Kills little children. You go to the hospital, you see children dying of cancer, and then we have HIV. We have all kinds of sicknesses. What if there is somebody in this room that... 
God one day is going to give you a gift for you to heal and banish cancer forever. Or to root out HIV. What if it is you? And you are not heeding to the call. And millions of people are dying because you are being stubborn. What if it is you? Somebody shout a big amen. What if there is a calling on your life? What if there is a gift on you that God wants to use for the generation that is coming? That is so stubborn that Satan wants to steal and destroy. But you are using your gift for foolishness. Look at the people in the world, for example. Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, all these people who are singing for the devil. Most of them, they started off in the church. Is somebody hearing me? So that means God had a greater purpose for them. But the enemy defeated and shifted that purpose. One day, I always say this, that one day God is going to ask us. One day you're going to stand naked before God. Bible said, naked you came and naked shall you leave. You will stand naked from head to toe before God and God will ask you that the gift I gave you, what did you do with it? What did you do with the gift? Are you going to say, God, what gift? Check yourself. Prophet, what is my gift? I don't know what is my gift. It's funny because, you know, people in the world can even sometimes know you have a gift. Because there is something about you when you enter into a place, your voice, when you begin to speak, everybody just, you know, calms down. That is a gift. But you need to learn how to activate it to use it for the kingdom. There is something about you. There is a presence about you. There is something about you. Even when somebody is down, you know how to cheer them up. As a little child grows, whatever little thing you see in you, or whatever thing you think is little, is not little in the sight of God. You see it to be little, but it's very huge. Somebody shall bring it back. Moses saw the staff to be a foolish staff. Well, what is this staff ever going to do? Until they turn to a snake. And then he saw that this staff that have always been taken for granted. Now look at it. Invite God in your life today. Ask God, God, what do you want to use me for? What is my gift? What is my ministry? Amen. Am I only supposed to come here and sit in the church? That is why I love people who sign up to talk in the church. To do things in the church. Do you know why? Because that will help you to locate what your gift is. Are you hearing me? You can never get to square two until you complete square one. Amen. There are people, for example, you know, when a little child is about to, is growing up, if you ask a child, what do you want to be? Say, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. The child will just say whatever he or she want to be. But as the child is growing up and going to school from grade one, grade two, grade three, and as going level to level, now something begins to open up in that child. The child now begins to learn, this is, this is what I really want to do. And then the child gets to a stage of now, that child has to choose a college that he or she want to go to. Then the time comes, the child now knows the class he or she needs to take in order to become who she really is. Moses didn't respect his stick. He didn't respect his staff. But look what God used. <coughs> now some of you are saying, Prophet, well, God only turned that staff into a snake. That was it. No, that wasn't it. Throughout Moses' whole life, that is the staff that God used to open the Red Sea. That is the staff that when Moses went to Pharaoh, he put it down and he turned to a snake. And Pharaoh magicians tried to copy it, but it didn't work. The snake swallowed the, 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 you know, the, the, the snakes yeah. of Pharaoh. Yeah. That is the staff that Moses lifted up into the heavens and hair began to fall. That's right. yeah. That is the staff that was with Moses until he died. <clears throat> the staff he never recognized or obeyed or never, you know, you know, took it for something great. Now look at the miracles God is using that staff to perform. Can you imagine the miracle God can use you to perform? If only you make yourself available. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. How many of you are ready to cast your, yourself at the feet of Christ today? Amen. And say, Lord, I'm ready. Use me. Wherever you send me, I will go. Hallelujah, somebody. Wherever you send me, I will go. Look to me. What does that mean? 
God told him to put the stick on the ground. He turned to a snake. He took it back again. It became a rod. Somebody shall be given. There is something you are holding that look normal right now. No. To you. If it has always been normal. It's something in you that looks normal. But if you will give it to God, He will transform it. Amen? But if you keep putting it to yourself, it will always be normal to you. Somebody shall be given. God can turn the natural into the supernatural. Amen? When He took it back, it turned back into a stick. Hallelujah, somebody. Today, I want you to give yourself freely to God so He can take you deeper. Amen. So he can, you know, supernatural whatever that is in your life that is natural. I'm believing in God today that today is the day of transformation for your life and for the gift that you don't respect in your life. Continue. That they may believe mm -hmm. that the Lord God of their fathers, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. the God of Isaac, mm -hmm. and the God of Jacob mm -hmm. hath appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm have appeared unto thee, so that they may believe. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Do you know why God wants to use what, what he has given you? Do you know why God wants to use you? God wants to use you so that the whole world will know that he is God. In other words, the glory don't belong to you. There are some of you who are gifted, but you think the glory belongs to you. This is a gift for her own glory. Perhaps God gave it to her to glorify God, so people will come to Christ. Now, let me, let me just ask you this. Look at somebody like Michael Jackson who's not dead. Look at all the great singers today. You know, Beyonce, all the rappers. You know, look how when they sing, when they sing, look how it makes people happy. Look how some people even faint. Michael Jackson was singing. Women will be dying. Oh, Michael! <laughs> faint. Now, imagine this. Imagine, imagine, let's turn it around. Imagine if Michael Jackson or Beyonce or all these singers were actually using their gift for God. Can you imagine how many, ooh, how many shows? How many, have you ever seen a Michael Jackson concert? Have you ever seen a Beyonce concert? Do you see the million of people who they look like ants? Millions! Can you imagine if they were singing with that same voice, glorifying God? Can you imagine how many people can you imagine how many lives will be turned around? But instead, they are singing about things that will make people smoke. Things that will make your doctors wear short skirts. Things that will make people twerk. All kind of foolishness that don't glorify God, but glorify who? Somebody shout a big amen. Just because he's giving you that repentance doesn't mean one day he's not going to ask you. He will ask you what you did with it. The thing I like about God, when he gives you something, he don't come and say, hey, where, where, where's what I gave you? God is not like man. Man is the only one who a man, a man, will, a man will fall in love with a beautiful woman. Amen. Now that man loves the woman, or the man just wants to sleep with the woman. So the man will buy everything for that woman. As soon as the woman says, no! I'm not sleeping with you. Okay, give me back my <laughs> Give me, give me. Give it back. Somebody said, give me. Yeah, yeah, that Louis Vuitton bag I bought for you. Give me. And, and give me my ring. Give me. Am I lying? It's true. That's how it is. Human beings are like that. They will come back for their gift. But God is not like that. That's what makes God different from man. When God gives you something, right, it's for you. Now it's up to you what you're going to use it for. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, many, all of us, God has given us a special gift. Me, God has given me a prophetic gift. I see things about people, amen. I preach the word of God, amen. People come and hear the word of God. But that gift is not for me to glorify myself with. It's to help people. If I begin to glorify myself with that gift, and use that gift to manipulate people and, and do all kind of foolishness, one day God will ask me. And he will judge me for that. And that is very dangerous. Those of us who are gifted and we are using our gift for foolish things, the Bible says our place is in hellfire, where the beast is going to be, and the false prophets. Hellfire. Somebody shall be given. So, please, today I want you to search within yourself. And many of you keep switching lanes. You're going to have an accident one day. 
Today you are prophetess. Tomorrow you are um, um, elite prophetess. The next day. <laughs> Nowadays, a lot of people put title on themselves. Oh, yeah. Amen. There is even a title called Chief Bishop Prophet. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. I had to. <laughs> I went to do a program and I had to, you know, introduce a certain man of God. And the, the, the titles that the guy had. When I finished mentioning the title, I had to drink wine. <laughs> Because, man, this guy had a lot of titles. Seven, chief, bishop, elites, elects. And I said, my God, what is going on here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there are some people who even have the title master prophet. Yeah. On themselves. Master. Can you imagine that? <laughs> master. What Jesus, when Jesus came on earth, people were calling Jesus master. So if you are calling yourself master, then then who? Are you saying you are bigger than Jesus? Somebody shout a big amen. Some people cannot just stay in their lane. Amen. They put all kinds of titles on themselves. Today you see their name is pastor. Tomorrow the pastor turned to prophet. The next day he turned to apostle, to bishop, archbishop. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Different titles. If you keep doing that, you're going to have a, a, you know, an accident. It's, it's like when you're on the highway, and let's say it's, it's many lanes, and you keep switching lanes over and over again, you're going to crash. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. you got to learn how to stay in your lane. Let God finish with you. Like I said, you, in order for you to go to square two, you must first complete square one. It's nothing if God, if God promotes you himself, then there's nothing wrong with it. Amen. Yes, God cannot date people as an apostle, bishop, whatever it is. Amen. But don't rush. Wait until it is your time. Somebody shout a big amen. Yeah. Amen. You have to be well cooked. I always say that, man. When you put food in the microwave, uh, sometimes when, you know, I put food in the microwave, I take it out and it's half hot and feel like you are actually eating food. But if you eat the food and it's just half hot, half, half cold, it's lukewarm. That's because you're not ready. Anything that is lukewarm is not ready. Hallelujah, somebody. We have too many half-baked people in the church nowadays. They are not fully baked. Amen. So the, the devil can use them easily. Have you ever seen somebody who can speak in all the tongues in heaven? But they are weak in the spirit. Because they are not well done. They are not seasoned. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. How many of you want to be prepared? Let me see you. How many of you are saying, Lord, I want you to prepare me. Empower me. You need a teachable spirit. That's how many of you need. A teachable spirit. How better will it be when you suck it all up and become so strong and then go out there? Amen. Then you are able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. Somebody shout amen. amen. Today the Lord said we are going to pray. And the Lord said our prayer is this. He said as we pray, he said he himself is going to search within you. God's hand is going to come down, search within you. And every seed that God planted in you, that seed is going to water it today. Hallelujah, somebody. So that it can grow and so God can use you. Because I believe everybody here has a gift. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. The Bible even says, many are called, but what? Somebody shout a big amen. Even if you think your purpose is not high, there is still a calling on your life. And you must attend to that calling. I always say that God is like the military. He's like the army. He sends you where you're needed. How many of you are ready to go where God needs you? Yeah, Even if it is in the hospital, are you ready to go? Yeah, Even if it is in the midst of sick people, are you ready to go? Yeah, Even if you have to go to OBT and rescue people who are on drugs, are you ready to go? Somebody clap your hands for Jesus.